This storm is now just a couple days out, bringing anything from snow on the northern end to severe weather on the southern end as this very strong cold front heads southeastward as we head through the midweek time frame. In this video, we'll be using the models to time out this storm and the warmer and cooler sides to it, as well as take a look towards the start of March. Everything right here. One Nation Weather. Thanks for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Check out the Weather Bell trial link in the description for the maps I use, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the rest of the video. Let's get right into it. Alright, as we go in towards our Monday here, you can see temperatures are going to be anywhere from 25 to even 45 degrees above normal over the central United States, but we've got this cold front that's going to push that through the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and eventually to the East Coast. So those record-breaking warm temperatures that we're going to see Monday afternoon from parts of Texas all the way on up there to the Midwest and Great Lakes, those are eventually going to head eastward, and that's as the storm system moves through the region. Not before a very warm Monday, though. You can see anywhere in this area I circled pretty much seeing 60s or 70s plus for highs. Even on up there in places like Des Moines, Iowa, we're going to hit the 70s Monday afternoon. A very warm air mass in place. Skipping ahead in towards our Tuesday, look at this. You can see in the afternoon hours of our Tuesday, you can really clearly make out that front right there with temperatures in the teens and 20s to the north and west of that front. Meanwhile, here in southern Wisconsin, parts of Illinois, um, into Indiana as well, we're sitting near 70 plus degrees. And back on down there towards Texas, the Arklatex region, closer to 85. So really crazy stuff to see those temperatures. And that's what's really helping to set this whole pattern up and this whole storm system up. As we go towards our, say, Monday, late day, and in towards our Tuesday, we will have been seeing that snowfall moving through parts of the Cascades, as well as through the Mountain West region, because the system is originating from there, bringing especially heavy snowfall Tuesday early morning into parts of northwest Wyoming, southern Montana. By the time we go towards our Tuesday afternoon, this is around, say, the evening hours of Tuesday at this point, as we go 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. Look at this. You can see that cold front with some snow behind it there over the central plains, but we've also got a warm front bringing some showers through the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic that will eventually lift on up there through the northeast as this low continues kind of making its way on off in that direction on there through southeast Canada. And as that low continues to progress off towards the northeast, that's when we're really going to begin to see the severe weather event ramp up. So we do have the potential for severe weather as we go late Tuesday night and in towards our Wednesday morning. It does remain there over parts of, say, southern Missouri on over there into parts of northern Kentucky as well. What's interesting is right behind that severe weather event, we could see the crash on over within six hours to some light snowfall there in some communities. You can see this front continuing to drag southeastward as that low continues heading on up there through parts of Ontario and Quebec. That low, again, draping that cold front all the way on back there towards Louisiana as we head towards our Wednesday afternoon. Showers, some storms push through parts of the east coast as we go Wednesday into Wednesday night, as well as some wraparound snowfall at the tail end of this low with that cooler air as we go towards our Thursday morning up there in the interior northeast. Other than that, the storm does begin to clear out as we head towards Thursday. Um, but as you can see, again, there's that surface pressure. Anything in the green is where we've got low pressure in place. Through the day Tuesday, you can see that low snaking through parts of the Great Lakes region before heading on up there through Ontario and Quebec in Canada. And that helps to bring the severe weather event. This is mostly for Tuesday night. Um, the Storm Prediction Center now highlighting that slight risk, that level two of five severe weather risk that they issue there from parts of Southeast Missouri on up there into parts of Southwestern Michigan. Not really changed. They've, you know, been having that yellow zone out for a little a while now, and it's really been encompassing a lot of the Midwest. That does remain, even on there into parts of eastern Oklahoma, though, still watching out for some stronger storms. And let's start out with those temperatures Tuesday afternoon. A very prime environment for severe weather, and especially in the temperature department here. You can see on up there in northwest Iowa, we've got that cold front bringing those 20s up there. Meanwhile, just down here through central Missouri, northern parts of Illinois, including places like Chicago, we're sitting in the low 70s, and even into the mid-70s there in central Missouri, so really warming up quite effectively here ahead of this system. You can see that cold front beginning to sag southeastward through the evening hours and bringing those storms to kind of fuel them and on up there. Dew points as our moisture content in the atmosphere here, and really anything above 60 is what you're looking for for a really prime severe weather event. We're getting close to 60. Moisture is going to be a little bit more of a struggle than the models initially indicated here. So with those dew points sitting around 55 to 60 here through parts of southeast Missouri, parts of Illinois and Indiana, that should be enough to bring some severe weather, but this will probably be one of the factors that actually ends up hampering this event if the dew points do end up staying like this. Again, we do have some things still to 
iron out and this could go trend back upward for now though that is on the downtrend for that severe weather threat so temperatures are in place pretty well you know the moisture is a little bit more modest though what is another thing that's effective in helping this severe weather event though is this low level jet your 850 millibar wind is just a fancy word of saying the low level jet any of those maroonish colors moving through parts of the ohio valley and midwest as we go late tuesday and into wednesday really indicating we've got wind shear because the winds that are coming from the southwest right here on this graphic i'm showing you are crossing with those winds that are coming in from the west and other layers of the atmosphere helping to create that rotation and develop potentially some rotating storms or at least some supercells capable of large hail. So as we go through the day Tuesday and into Tuesday night, this is my O&W severe weather scale. It goes from 1 to 7. I've been using this over the last several days now. You can see from northeast Oklahoma to southern Michigan, that's where I'd watch the threat. I've got the 2 of 7 on my scale, meaning probably some severe weather, maybe a low-end tornado threat. Best chance for all hazards will be there through parts of southeast Missouri on up there through parts of Indiana. As we go into Wednesday, of course, good news is that the Storm Prediction Center, as of now, again, we'll probably get some sort of outlook from them for Wednesday over the next, you know, 12 hours here from when I film this video. But they have dropped that huge risk zone that they were initially expecting for Wednesday, which is why I've downgraded my threat to a broad two of seven here from parts of northeast Arkansas and northwest Georgia on up there to Ohio and west Pennsylvania. Again, everything that I show in this video is subject to change. Um, check weather.gov for all your latest alerts and information here. And again, let's talk about the snowier side of the system as well. I think the GFS model is honestly doing a little bit of a better job pinning this down. And as you can see, again, Monday late evening, we've got a lot of snow over there over the Pacific Northwest into the Mountain West as well. This kind of avoids the Four Corners region a little bit, although some will sneak in of the snow will sneak into Utah and western parts of Colorado. But look there at how the snow kind of sets on up at the tail end of this event through parts of northern Missouri on up there all the way to the upper peninsula of Michigan. We'll get this little band of some snow, maybe even some ice separating it from the rain. We'll see if we get any, you know, accretion of some of that ice that could last beyond that point. But you can see, you know, notice some of those blues trying to filter on in at the tail end of this event late Wednesday. Look at those again. This is Wednesday, 7 a.m. Snow through parts of Chicago, maybe just after a severe weather event. And then by the time we go towards, say, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon there on our Wednesday, we've got snow moving through parts of Michigan, through parts of Indiana, even western Ohio, and then look at how even more of that snow starts crashing on over towards the east through the day Wednesday, and I'm kind of zooming this picture out so you can see it a little better. Some of that snowfall as well also making its way into interior New England there, we'll some, where some decent totals will add up, up, especially on up there through parts of Maine. All right, let's talk snowfall totals here using that GFS model. And again, this is just one model. The Euro has a slightly different solution, but kind of looking at the snowfall in an overall fashion, we're nearing the storm, so these are going to get more and more accurate day by day. You can see over there over the Pacific Northwest, especially the Cascades, some spots there in the Cascades, high elevations of Idaho and Montana picking up two plus feet of snowfall there. Some elevations there as well in the parts of northwestern Wyoming, northern Utah, and western parts of Colorado picking up on a solid foot plus of snow as well. The initial part of this event could bring an onset of snow there into parts of northeast North Dakota into northern Minnesota that could bring a few inches of snow. But it's also this little stripe here that we're watching. This is the one I was telling you about that kind of crashes on over at the tail end of this event. Anywhere there from northeast Nebraska and northeast Kansas on up there through parts of northern Michigan, a solid stripe of maybe a couple of inches of snow, and that gets elevated there in the upper peninsula. And we've also got this event kind of trying to move through Ohio with the dusting there through western Pennsylvania and then some, you know, some two to four plus inch totals there into higher elevations of the northern Appalachians and interior northeast. One last thing to talk about with this system is those wind gusts that we see to pick on up because as we go through Monday, increased fire danger over the four corners into the western high plains as well as these gusts surge upwards of 45 miles per hour in some cases there. Some of these gusts will continue and even ramp on up there over New Mexico and West Texas as we go in towards our Tuesday, but we're going to kind of fast forward past that and kind of show you how these gusts progress eastward. You know, it's going to be pretty breezy, 20, 30, maybe 35, 40 mile per hour gusts over a lot of the central and eastern United States as we go Tuesday into Wednesday as those south winds pump in that much warmer than average air. Wednesday afternoon, though, I think that's when the storm system brings in those green colors, the European model indicating some maybe 40, 45 mile per hour gusts, not out of the question in some of those shades. Um, and then that system kind of moves through the interior northeast and then offshore. One other thing I want to talk about as we head towards the start of March here, this is your six to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center heading on into that first week of March. It's looking much warmer than average here over parts of the Great Lakes region, especially. Um, and there's a lot of cool air knocking on the door there in the west 
past us. It's probably going to be very active with a lot of rain and high elevation snowfall there. And look at the future radar from the European model showing as we go late Sunday, March 3rd into Monday, March 4th, this humongous storm and a very strong looking storm system with those dynamics as we head into the central United States in that time frame. This would definitely be stronger than our current one that I'm tracking right now, bringing showers and storms, some of them severe probably from parts of North Texas, Arkansas, all the way on up there into parts of Minnesota and South Dakota on the eastern side of those states anyway. And on the western side of the Dakotas, look at that snow that wraps around, and then the rain that heads eastward in southern zones. Crazy to see that there, but this kind of trough that we're looking at here, this is something I haven't really talked about with any of our recent events. This is a negatively tilted trough. You can see the way this looks kind of like a bowling ball kind of spilling on out of the western part of the United States. This is a really strong and classic trough for severe weather. And, you know, this is too far out to call anything on right now, but it's definitely worth watching as models do try to get in consensus on that one. Please hit that subscribe button so I can keep you ahead of those storms and Weatherbell Maps trial in the description. Thanks so much for joining me.